Good morning, everybody. Oh, what a weird night. What a weird night. I was pretty much up most of the night, up and down, up and down. And I don't feel like I haven't slept. I, I know I haven't really slept. I was sleeping intermittently and up for like an hour or two listening to YouTube, listening to one of my favorite uh, channels that talk about current society today and his interviews and stuff. So you can see that on my on my timeline if you're on my Facebook. But um, but yeah, uh, like I don't feel tired, but I was up like almost all night last night with just little breaks and sleep here and there. So anyways, um, the last this last week since December 1st, I've been focusing on heart disease. And I really can't tell you why, what prompted me. I think maybe the fact that I figured out that electrolytes help the blood pump through the body. Electrolytes and nutrition and the right balance of lactic acid and yeah, electrolytes, nutrition, which is also minerals, okay? And the right balance of lactic acid keeps the body going. And also the electrolytes are pulled out as a last defense when the body's going through a symptom, trying to correct itself from a predisposition, a weakness. And so, and then I just, that, then, then I just went down that rabbit hole. And then I'm like, oh my God, diabetes is a precursor, obesity is a precursor, even skinny fat is a precursor for heart disease, and then strokes too, and then focusing on the thing with the Dr. Phil lady who was complaining of a stroke when she was on the protocol, but she was predisposed to a stroke because I've been on the protocol for three years, nary a stroke. I don't even have any, you know, as far as I know, any heart conditions. I don't know my family medical history because I'm adopted. So everything that I'm finding out, I'm finding out as I go along, okay? I don't have the luxury of knowing what I could be in for, like some of you have the luxury of knowing what your kids are in for because you know what you're dealing with and you have the luxury of knowing what your parents have dealt with, okay? So you guys can kind of plan out and figure out what you're up against if you don't change your ways, okay? And then suddenly, just with, you know, a couple of days ago, somebody passed away from a heart attack right after I've been focusing on heart disease and all that. So I've been looking up the different types of heart disease and sudden cardiac arrest and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and strokes. And then you have, then we know about cancer and then all disease. And then we all get lost in the symptoms and the names of the symptoms and the vaccines and all that. I mean, it's like, it's so much information. And then a friend of mine was like saying, hey, could you do some kind of like notes where some kind of guidelines so I can give somebody or my family a real brief synopsis on what it is that we're doing and why, okay? And so how do you harness like all this information and try to get it into like one little thing, right? You know, and so, um, so yeah, so it's about organizing information and getting your head clear enough to put it all together and have it have the smooth transitions from one thing to the next where it's not so broken so you can see the connections because that's the whole point of this is seeing the connections. If you don't see the connections, then you're going to live oblivious and you're not going to realize that every single thing you do is contributing to life or death. And that's why I focus so much on death right now because that's the end result for all of you who are not going to change your ways. Okay, it's the inevitable out there for those that are riding on their, I don't know, riding on the luck that they're alive. When they're not actually really taking control and understanding their biochemistry and chemistry, you're just rolling the dice every single day. And I don't want you guys to roll the dice. I want you to have some kind of control over your health and longevity, as well as teaching your children this, because this is why we have wars and, 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 you know, psychopaths and, and criminals in our societies because we have major predispositions that are affecting 
the body, mind, and spirit. And you're going to see a lot more of it because people keep procreating on bodies that are traumatized and now you're creating even more predispositions, okay? And then the gap between life and death becomes narrower and narrower, all right? So what prompted me about this thing with the sports and, and, and heart attacks was because I was watching Dr. Phil yesterday. Oh, yes, I do watch Dr. Phil because I want to see his focus, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting because where he's going from, you know, May of 2018 when he was focusing on me and trying to capitalize on that, on the controversy of J-Juice because people didn't understand the salt, they didn't understand the fermentation, they didn't understand pain, and they were thinking that I'm just some, you know, flash in the pan with a limited lifespan, and they don't realize that this protocol gives you the drive to figure shit out. When something is not right, this protocol will make you figure it out. It will keep you focused if you stay on it and you understand the pain sequence and you understand why the components are so good and so aligned with the body. So I was watching Dr. Phil yesterday and they're talking about Larry Nasser and how he was abusing all these gymnasts. And he's like in the sports medicine doctor, you know, he's in this hospital in Michigan. I'm like, why are all these gymnasts going to these doctors? What the hell? And then I'm realizing, oh my God, when you're an athlete, especially, and I was a gymnast too. I was, I was an athlete too. I played soccer. And let me tell you, I had a lot of sports injuries. I mean, I had balls, balls to the face, but here, I had soccer balls going to my face. I had hyper extending my, my, my wrist, um, been kicked in the shins, sprained my ankle. I mean, I, I was a very, like, I, I was a very active child, okay? And when I had my last sports injury was when I was in San Francisco playing goalie with all these big women who are, like, six foot tall, you know, 200 pounds, freaking kicking the soccer ball right at me. And I'm just, like, doing this, and I'm hyper, and that, and that ball is like a freaking bullet, and it over hyper extends my wrist, and I'm just, like, I can't feel my wrist, like, like all the feeling left, and I'm, like, oh, my God, I have to stop this because I'm trying to, to get a job in typing or something or a, a, as an admin assistant. I cannot have not have use to my hands. So I had to leave the sports world because I was getting older, and I didn't see myself lasting when I'm playing against women that are, 20 times larger than me, even just doing this as a hobby. This wasn't even something that I was doing for a living. Oh no, I mean, I, I played soccer as a kid, I did gymnastics, you know, I didn't do too much of the running because I don't like running. So I always played fullback and always played goalie. So I've always been sports oriented, always been in the sports world. And now it's like, okay, so now watch, so now, so now watching that show, and then I'm, you know, then we know about the Olympics and so we know about football and basketball and PE in school and then how parents shove their children into football and to soccer and to swimming and all these things. And these kids already have predispositions and creating more predispositions, more weaknesses on the body. Okay. And so that's why we're having kind of a chain reaction of just uh, predispositions compounding, 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 compounding every generation. Okay, so I'm just thinking like, my God, this guy, Larry Nasser, is just has access to all these young girls with parents that are oblivious, totally trusting these organizations that hiring people who have issues and they're hiding behind their degrees and their PhDs. Say, no, these girls are stupid. You know, we don't believe them when they're saying that this guy is abusing them. So he's been having access to these girls for years and these girls are going through this hospital. I'm like, oh my God. And and why are they going to these hospitals? Why are these gymnasts going to the hospital? Because they're getting sports injuries, sprains, you know, I mean, head injuries from landing on their head or their neck or different parts of their body. And it causes weaknesses. And then they got to go and get, you know, uh, sports medicine stuff, or they have to go get massages or whatever it is that these, these sports doctors do. And so these girls are now creating predispositions. Not, not only do they already have predispositions from their parents, you know, look at their parents, their parents are already telling you what, what this girl's in for. But now going through the sports world has created more predispositions, more weaknesses. And so then when, you know, you're getting like brain injuries because you're landing wrong on your head or you're getting balls from soccer balls to your head or you're playing 
uh, football and you're getting constant concussions. It's not just cancer that people are dying from, okay? This is what I didn't focus on too much because I've been focusing on the cancer and disease, chronic illness and all that. But now we have to focus on what actually causes death. We know about cancer and all the different therapies with cancer and chemotherapy and cannabis and all that, okay? That's only one, that's only one component of death. There are, there are three things, well, there are three things that people die from in our society. Cancer, okay, which we know about, but heart disease, which we know about, but it's not as like cancer. Like cancer is like the big thing that all these vaccine anti-vaxxers and and people who are like, you know, just against the system, they're all worrying about cancer. But the thing that people are not really talking about too much, which we know about that heart disease is a number one leading cause of death along with cancer. Then you have the strokes. But heart disease, which then slash sudden cardiac uh, death, and then hypertrophic, hypertrophic myopathy. That's part of heart disease. And then stroke. And then where does the sports fit into with this? Because you're creating predisposition, getting brain injuries. Guess where your brain is connected to? To your heart. Vessels and all this stuff are being affected. Okay. And so then there's this connection between the brain injuries and the heart. And now you're seeing a weakness. And then a person is is malnourished. They have malabsorption. Already predispositions from their predecessors. This is what people die from. So now we know how people die, okay? So then you gotta look at what life is in our society. So now you understand that it's oxymoronic. The death process in our society, reproduction, disease, and uh, death is life in our society, okay? <laughs> is life in our society. And I'm like, <sighs> now people are accomplishing great things within the death process in our society. But now we're seeing the, I mean, I mean, you have 300 years of opportunity to figure it out because, you know, mother nature and whoever gave us the opportunity of life is saying, okay, you have so many years to figure it out. Well, I'll say 300 years because of America, but the Vatican and Europe have still maintained. And then we have then the caveman days and all those places out there and, you know, and, and, Africa and Asia and all that stuff. They've been around for like thousands and thousands and thousands of years, but they still keep recycling. I mean, reproduction is 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 necessary to mitigate extinction. But at some point, you know, maybe more than 300 years, maybe like 10,000 years, I don't know, or 15,000 years or something. I mean, you figure out when man actually started and then now where we are today, you know, we were given an opportunity to figure it out. Now we have, but now you have to go through the pain process because here's the thing. You're seeing every generation is, is becoming a little bit more whacked out. I mean, I'm already seeing my friends as kids getting sick every four weeks. Children are being born on bodies that are so messed up and they inherit these issues and then they have to go live in a bubble. So yeah, we've been focusing on the vaccines and cancer and disease, but that's just your freaking insurance policy. Nobody's really talking about sudden cardiac death. No one's really talking about a hypertrophic myopathy. What is hypertrophic myopathy? When you already have a predisposition of um, muscles in your heart are, be, are too enlarged and it can't pump blood through those vessels. And then being on sports on top of that. And then you have heart disease where then, so where then you have too much fatty acid in your, uh, too many fatty deposits in your blood vessels, blocking the blood going to the brain and to the heart. So then that's the strokes also. See, stroke and heart attack are connected, but no one really talks about that too much. Yeah, they'll say, okay, do you have a predisposition of heart disease? And if you don't even know, then you're just basically flying blind. Why don't you just assume you have some kind of heart issues? Okay, just assume 
if you are born, if you are in our society right now, most likely you have inherited some kind of heart issue in some way, some weakness in your heart, some weakness in your brain, obviously your blood vessels, because people don't, I mean, what, what, what do people die from? They die from, well, I mean, when you actually think about it, when you have cancer, like I would love to know what the autopsy report for everybody that dies in our society. Yeah, when you hear about a cancer patient dying in hospice, what's the actual autopsy? Like some of you have, know people that have died in hospice. You should all look in your, just like what you've dealt with. Like, I don't know anyone that has died that would give me access to their, their health records. I have a grandma that died, but I'm not going to ask my mom. Wait, what, what? Like, they'll say, oh, she died from breast cancer. But is it really died from breast cancer? What was the actual last action? Because you can have cancer. And that cancer weakens everything, but the actual event at where it totally caused you to completely die would most likely be a stroke or a heart attack. Okay. But I, I mean, but that's just like, that's me just assuming because I, I mean, if you have cancer and you have chemotherapy, just dying doesn't, doesn't seem right. So there has to be an event that the body, because the body still wants to live. There's still bioelectrical impulses, but the fact that people are malnourished and they don't have enough minerals and enough nutrients in the body to carry the blood through, you know, it, 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 the event will still happen. Just to, just, I mean, people that die in their sleep, but they don't really die in their sleep. Were you there during their sleep when they were going through it? Like when that guy passed away, my husband's coworker, we don't know. I mean, we, we hear that we heard that he had chest pains. Those are the precursors of some kind of heart attack is chest pains and numbness and, and all that stuff, right? So when he actually passed away, it could have been a 15-minute a, a ordeal. I mean, I can't imagine what someone goes through when they die in their sleep. Okay? So... So when somebody in a hospice patient, when they actually pass away, what was the last action before they stop breathing? Now, some people say that they've watched somebody pass away. They've watched somebody pass away. Like they just stopped breathing. Well, they're under so much medication that it's almost like it paralyzes the body so you can't see. But I would love to read what the coroner and the doctor wrote. Now, I don't know how much they, how much detail they give when, you know, when somebody does pass away, like, right, cause people say they, they, they've seen someone pass away in their sleep, they, they watched them, they watched them pass away in their sleep. Now, yeah, when you get shot by a gun or someone kills you, that's a different story. But when somebody is battling a disease like cancer and they're on chemotherapy or cannabis and all of that, and, and, they're, and they're all on all these morphine drips and all these different machines, so how do you really know what exactly is going on unless you actually read the detailed description of the coroner's report or autopsy or whatever? And those of you that have access to that, that have friends and family that have passed away, you should go look and see exactly, like seriously, you should go see exactly what it is that your friends and family actually have died from at the end of their life. Because cancer disease and chronic illness is just the insurance policy letting you know that they're on their way out the door. And you've got to do something about it. And if you don't, and if you don't, then, um, you know, then you're going to have an event that you're not going to be able to control. Okay. And so Boris Grimm, too bad you're not going to have access to this information by Boris Grimm. That's pretty grim, Boris. <laughs> but yeah, so our society, our society is based upon how much can you accomplish within the death process? How much can you accomplish? And so when we reproduce children, we're not correcting. We're not correcting the weaknesses. And so uh, reproduction does come from major trauma. Having a child in our society is not some feat that it's so like extraordinary. Yeah, it's great. You have a kid. Okay, anybody can go have sex and get pregnant. Most for most, for the most part. 
unless you have already pre-existing conditions that stop you from doing that. But having a child in our society is not really a, a milestone when you think about it. Because reproduction comes from trauma, okay? And then this kid is inheriting all of your issues and then they're predisposed and then you hope to God that they accomplish something to leave a legacy so that way they can feel fulfilled and feel like they've been they've been productive in our society and that way so, I mean, you can brag to your friends and family oh my child went you know went to this ivy league school and they did this and they did that and that's what our society is runs on is the the pride and the um, status of how successful your child is but right now you're seeing children who are turning vegan and vegetarian because they're seeing the cancer disease and chronic illness in their family. They're seeing people's prolonged illnesses and they're saying, oh my God, I don't want to die because no kid wants to follow in their parents' footstep as far as the death process because they've watched it. They've watched their grandmas going through and deteriorating over a period of time. They've watched their parents, older people, watch their parents deteriorating. They're watching their, their, their brothers and sisters with major imbalances, major, major imbalances in the body, mind, and spirit, and they don't want to end up like that. So the pendulum swings the other way, but when the pendulum swings the other way, it still creates another set of major, major issues. And so what the whole point of the J-juice is not living from that life is about reproduction, disease, and death. Life is about continuously living where you don't feel the need to reproduce, where you don't feel the need to have a disease, which is not like you feel the need to, but to cure death, you get disease in our society. That's the natural progression of our society is if when we go into third world countries and we're giving vaccines with a country with a high infant mortality rate, you're going to see disease. But people don't focus on the fact that 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 gates and whoever in the peace corps are bringing life to a society that has a very high infant mortality rate they're just focusing on oh my god they have a disease they're not even worried about that they're, they've they've actually you know uh created the decline of infant mortality and so and so with that you know then uh, yeah and so now you have a disease inside that people are managing so even the most healthy, that's why yesterday when I, when I got into it with that chick yesterday, she's saying, oh yeah, there are people that are do, doing vegan and vegetarian correctly. Not when you're aging, not in this society that's not doing JGs. And I hate to say it like that because it sounds like I'm feeling like the end all be all. But when you live in a society that is not correcting the predispositions and are capitalizing on your youth, and what we think is acceptable as far as health, okay, working out, looking skinny, but you can be skinny fat with so much intense issues in your body. You can have that window of where relative, relative to the population, you're healthier than most, but it doesn't mean that you're actually healthy, you're just healthier than most. But you still have predispositions that can go awry at any time. And so people die from sudden cardiac you know, death or from hypertrophic myopathy or a stroke, or they prolong their death process with cancer. And then in the end, it's heart disease, you know, uh, sudden cardiac death and hypertrophic HCM. Then, you know, and then, then it's like, okay, and, then, and then, then they just move on, okay? So now we're like, okay, why don't we just, you know, prolong life without dealing with reproduction, death, and disease. But now here's the thing. I was watching this show or on YouTube um, about China. And China has a billion people. Uh, and they've been around a lot longer than the West. They have one billion people. And they are now probably going to be the leader in advanced technology. They're already doing the 5G stuff. They already have pretty much a facial recognition, all this, you know, everything, everybody is now connected to the grid and they have 1 billion people. Here in America, we're not replacing, when people are dying, they're not replacing themselves, okay? And so how can 
indefinite life where you're not procreating, you know, at a continuous basis, creating a football team that's adding to our military. How can we still be a superpower, less than numbers, but a stronger person? See, that's the thing that I'm looking at as far as with this protocol, how does this fit in the bigger global scheme as far as foreign relations, okay, and superpowers. And so this is something that our American government and the West need to pay attention because if you're already seeing news reports that are saying that the West in America, we are not replacing ourselves and we're dying at a faster rate and you're seeing it. People are dying at the prime of their life. How are we going to compete on the global market? We're going to have to be beholden to China, who has 1 billion people that have access to resources, when you only have 300 million in America that is steadily declining. We're going to have to be beholden to China. We're going to have to figure out how to have relations with China and Russia and all these big, huge, well, and Russia, not so much, but China is the actual, the global power. And I've been there. I've, and this, this, this video... Oh my God. I mean, it, it, I was up last night all night and I was watching this video going like, oh my God, like I didn't want to sleep because I wanted to hear this. This was some good information. You guys got to listen to it. It's like an hour or two hours long or an hour. It's an interview with a general that was placed in China and he's watching China grow from where they had a hiccup with the cultural revolution. And I was in China between in 2004. He was in there between 2002 and 2004. I was in there in 2004. And it, you know, when I was there, I mean, they were like, oh my God, Americans, they had, you know, I went to a bookstore and it was all like American entrepreneurs.